to start with. Uh, how are you today? Doing pretty good. Can't complain. Uh, despite the pandemic, I'm doing surprisingly well. Yeah, well, that's good to hear. It seems like things are going a bit crazy now and then over there. <laughs> yeah, but we'll get through it. Yeah. Um, but, well, we're mostly here to talk about your uh, upcoming album, Dealing with Demons. Um, I'm guessing you're pretty excited about it finally coming out, because I believe it, it's been finished already for like a year or something. I think, well, as far as instrumentally, I'm, in my parts, it's uh, been longer than that. Actually, God damn it, I don't know what I did with it now, but I... Uh... <laughs> I had to call Neil up the other day and actually ask him all the dates on <laughs> like when we started things and when we finished things. And I wrote it down and I honestly, I can't remember, but let's see, I think I finished my parts. It's been a little over a year because I think it was summer of last year of 2019, I think is when Neil and I finished all the guitars and bass. And then in February of 2000. No, it was 2018. Because Des started vocals in 2019, I believe. Yeah. In Feb no, in, Fe in February? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's been a while. The, the, the album yeah. seems a little bit... Uh, it, it's aged already for me a bit compared to uh, other people. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, probably... probably like pretty happy that you can finally like share it more with the world than just kind of sitting on it. Yes. Because I, I'm so happy with this record that mm -hmm. more happy that I've been since our third record last time words, you know, this is, you know, it's like everything just fell into place for this record for some reason. And I didn't know it until after Des had finished vocals because, mm -hmm. you know, like I, I just said, there was about six months in between finishing the music and then finishing vocals where it's like, well, okay. You know, when you put down vocals, it really changes the song a lot. And um, having Steve Evitz, our producer on this one, I felt a little bit more confident with him working with Dez than in the past. Like he just, I mean, Steve is an amazing talent and a really, really good record producer. And I felt more confident going in the, this record with him for some reason, as well as when he was going to take the music and do Des's parts. But um, they started sending in music, you know, and rough mixes to me and the rest of the guys as Des was doing vocals. And I, I was overwhelmingly happy with everything that he was doing. And, you know, especially when he threw everybody a curveball with that song, Wishing, mm -hmm. and did some yeah. clean vocals. I was just like, oh, finally, you know, <laughs> something new and fresh for the band that we've never done before. I love it. Yeah. And I, when, when I heard the song, was it last week that, that you released it? I was uh, very pleasantly surprised. <laughs> I mean, it, it has that, well, since he only kind of used clean vocals with, with um, Cold Chamber in the past. It kind of have, has that touch, but it's still very much Devil Driver, which I really like the mix of it. Yeah, him and Steve got, like, this, the way he, you know, the way he had Dez sing it, the way, you know, the effects that he put on his voice, mm. you know, it, it doesn't sound like Cold Chamber to me at all. It sounds like he pulled something out of Dez that Dez didn't even know he had in him. And I know that it was a little surprising for Dez, too, because mm -hmm. we had a brief conversation about changing those clean vocals and having him scream them. Because, you know, Dez had this, this point in time where, you know, and I go through these things, too, as well, when I'm writing, where like i don't know we should release this you know what, what are the fans gonna think blah 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 and then you know i immediately was like dude don't change a thing i promise you from a listening standpoint this is awesome everyone's gonna love it we have to do something different and i like it so much i think it should be 
the third or fourth single that we released from the record. You know, it's it's great. And luckily, you know, the, the response we've had to that song is incredibly positive. I'm actually I'm a little shocked how positive it's been. I thought there would be more haters because people just love hating on people these days. <laughs> but um, it's mostly positive. I couldn't be happier. Yeah, it just, I don't know, everything fits, everything works with that song. I, I, uh, I couldn't imagine it differently. After me neither. No. I'm glad they did it mm-hmm. that way. <laughs> um, no, you just said, like, that like was something completely new for the band. I kind of had a feeling that, that it's sort of not the only thing for this album, because cause the sound of, of this album, it kind of sounds more, like, meteor meteor to me like fuller and and heavier sometimes like slower i'd almost dare to say but not completely that so i was just wondering is was there some some something you did like differently considering um like writing recording the music the fact that you you know it it sounds slower that was actually one thing that was intentional that Neil brought up to me when we were on tour. I'll never forget being on the tour bus with him and talking about what we want to do with this record before we started writing for it. And that was his suggestion. He's like, I, I mean, you, you know, Mike, you do whatever you want to do with your songs, but I'm taking the approach of slowing things down a little bit, you know, and that sounds bad. Uh, that, you know, that doesn't, it's not a good way to describe a metal record that's coming out. Like, this record is going to be slower than anything we've ever put out, you know? So I've been a little bit, you know, I want to uh, articulate on that subject a little bit, you know, when you slow things down a little bit, the song doesn't have to be necessarily slower because the tempo is, you know, you can, the song can actually seem faster if you, you know, rather than, you know, if you're playing 16th notes, 32nd notes, you know, a million miles per hour and just squeezing that stuff in there. But that's the thing. You can squeeze more stuff in as well as a slower song can can slam a little harder and groove a little bit better than having it be super fast. And that was the one thing that Neil suggested. And I was, you know, I never thought about it that way, but I went into you know when i went into writing in my studio you know by myself you know to, in, to start writing songs to present to the band uh you know i followed suit to neil's mentality you know it's like i'm gonna slow things down a little bit i'm not gonna write in 170 to 190 bpm which has always kind of been my comfort zone i guess for a lot of years you know i'm gonna hover around the 130 to 150 zone for a little while and see what happens and uh you know it's just doing that it just made all this material just pour out of me really quickly in the writing process and i was just you know it it was amazing how a little just one little comment like that from neil can it just changed everything for me in the writing process not to mention there are faster songs on there you know yeah i every record i always go through all the tempos and analyze i'm like okay we got a lot of songs in in this area i'm going to do a song in something different that we haven't done yet just to make sure that there is diversity in the record you know and that song may not make the record but in a lot of cases it does and i hope it thinks it helps mix things up a bit yeah i think like there's definitely found some still there um it's, it's, I don't know, I, I talked about it with, with uh, some other band earlier this year that they used to be this like crazy trash metal band that were just like blistering fast songs and, and such. And for their new album, they went for like the more kind of Pantra um, influence, like more groove adding to it, slowing it down, simplifying things a bit. And we discussed that it just opened up the songs way more and, and, and like, gave for instance the the guitar solos more room and stuff like that it Which, does yeah. yeah and the solos is it was a big thing for me because playing at smaller tempos it's not smaller slower <laughs> all right it, i almost overslept today a little bit and i'm still working on my coffee 
but um yeah i found it uh i wanted to do my solos on this record much different than i did before you know i i didn't want to you know i have some little shreddy parts in there but for the most part i wanted to get away from that you know my all-time favorite guitar player is jerry Cantrell, and you know he's one of these guys that i think is like in my eye in my eyes the perfect guitar player because he can shred if he wants but for the most part he just writes these riffs and these solos that tell a story they're phrased very very well and they're memorable you know there's a lot of people that go out there and shred a million miles per hour, but it's to me it's like oh, which is still cool, you know. Shredding is awesome, I'm not dissing it, but um, it, the, you know, at my age now, the way that I look at guitar and everything, that's more what I'm trying to go for myself is phrasing and writing things that are memorable rather than you know, playing as many notes as I can, you know, within a guitar solo. It's just, that hasn't been my thing for a very, very long time. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think having the best, if you could do both, to me, that's the ideal guitar player. Yeah, Yeah, I I believe you can just, you can really hear on on the album that it's sort of like a, like it's it's still um, clearly Devil Driver, but it's like a, has a fresh approach, fresh touch to it. And, you know, and, and Neil is that guitar player, you know, he can shred yeah. his, his fingers off, but he also has this amazing way of phrasing his solos. Yeah. And, you know, one of the reasons I'm very, very happy that we had him join the band because, you know, he, Neil never ceases to amaze me with his guitar playing. You know, he just, Anytime I'm stuck in a rut and I can't come up with something, I just don't even worry about it anymore. You know, I just wait until Neil comes over and be like, dude, help me figure something out for this part. And he'll usually come up with something within, you know, within 10 minutes. And I'm like, stop. That's it. You know, let's focus around that idea right there. Okay, cool. <laughs> Take it from there. And, you know, it's working with him is, is it's so much fun. And, and it definitely makes my life easier. <laughs> yeah, sounds like it. Well, that's good. <laughs> um, well, when whenever like a band is like about to release a new album, um, it always, always makes me wonder a little bit if you have like, um, like a favorite track on the album. But like, considering playing it live, which one you're really looking forward to to play live? Yeah, there. Uh, uh... Keep Away From Me has always been, I think, I mean, it's hard to say. It's one of my favorite tracks on the record. I don't think I even really have a favorite track because there's so many. And, you know, there's a lot of songs that are (laughs) on volume two that uh, no one's going to hear for a while. (laughs) But uh, um, I I, I do have kind of an emotional attachment to Keep Away From Me. Uh, You know, I wrote that song... You know, it's a very dark sounding song. And looking back mm-hmm. on my life when I wrote that, it wasn't the happiest, most joyful time of my life for numerous reasons. And the funny thing is, is like during a pandemic, you know, is this is the happiest I've been in years. Like my life is is fucking awesome right now, despite mm-hmm. the pandemic. I, I can't complain. Like I'm, I'm very, very lucky and fortunate my two favorite things in, in the world to do are surfing and, and play guitar and work on music. And I can still do those things, you know? So, um, I'm glad <laughs> I picked surfing and music as my two favorite hobbies. Um, but yeah, that, that song kind of represents musically what I was going through at the time. And, um, it was one of those moments in the writing process, I think more than ever, where I, I was writing that song and, you know, we didn't really change much when we were in pre-production with the band. You know, we came up with the whole intro, you know, the mm-hmm. that starts the record, you know, in pre-production. That was one of Steve's idea. And it was, it was kind of based off a Black Sabbath song, you know. Um, I forget which one. I can't think of which Black Sabbath song. It's one of the songs off Paranoid. 
but and uh it's just one of those songs that came together that i knew i had something super cool while i was writing it that you know it's one of those feelings where it's like okay this is definitely one of the coolest songs i think i've ever written and i know i see it differently than other people you know some people like that song some people don't but um i really enjoy it and i hope that we could play it live one day and then the other is actually the other opening track for volume two that uh is another song that i think would it would out of all the songs that we have i think that song is going to go over very well live when we play it it's it's just one of those songs that i think you know you could play live and even if no one had ever heard it before and it will still sink in because sometimes that's a little hard to do with with heavy metal to yeah. play something live when your fans haven't heard it and like well this is new you know and uh they're just kind of sitting there like a dog looking at you with a with a tilted <laughs> head like hmm you know and they're trying to absorb it and they're you know it's it's hard to pick a song to to do that with before uh the songs mm-hmm. have been released to the public but uh you know, I, I do kind of miss that playing songs that haven't been released yet. And that's just not something that really happens anymore because you re- start releasing singles so much sooner these days. Mm-hmm. And uh, um, it's easier to get them out to the public, you know. Yeah, because Before they would just be, um, be on the radio and you couldn't, you know, unless you recorded it to a cassette, you couldn't hear it whenever you wanted. Now things have changed. Yeah, true. Um, well, anyway, sounds like something to look forward to then, that other opening track of uh, Volume 2. Talking about Volume 2, it, it was originally planned for, like, next year, but I'm guessing that might change a bit. It might. It's still up in the air. Um, yeah. My guess is yes, because, mm. you know, even from a record label's perspective, it you know you want the band to go out and play the songs off the new record hype it up let people know that it's out there and you know here we here we are with our first double record it will probably be our only double record that we've ever done and we can't go out and and tour on it Mm. but Actually, I'm now I'm actually really glad that we did a double record because either we would probably go in the studio and do another one while this pandemic is going on without doing any touring on this one at all. But I like the idea that we can give people a little uh, or a pretty big chunk of what we did now during these shitty times. And once things simmer down and bands can go out and tour again, you know, we've got more of the same for you with you know, eight, nine different, completely different songs to uh, follow up with. Yeah. I can, I kind of like it that, like, there's still quite some metal bands that decide, okay, we're just releasing stuff still. We're not, like, if it's possible, we're not delaying it or anything. Because I've heard of some bands saying that, like, we want to release it because music can be, like, cathartic or, like, help you through these times and stuff like that. So I guess, like, that the fact that you're releasing dealing with demons might actually help some people actually dealing with their demons. <laughs> I would hope so. You know, it's. Yeah. I hope people feel the same way about our record as I am about the new Marilyn Manson record because I've been a, a huge fan of his since I was mm-hmm. 15, and you know he hasn't released a record that has completely blown me away since Hollywood, and. Um, I'm completely blown away by We Are Chaos. I think I like every single song on the record. It's it's very different from what he usually does. And, uh, you know, I love getting a new record like that during times like this, you know. And it's really the only record that's come out during since the pandemic has started that I've really, really gravitated to. And it's just like, mm-hmm. finally, you know, like Manson is he's he's back and releasing a incredible material again and for the first time in 20 years now he's always released songs off other albums that i've liked i've always been able to find something but it's not it's never been as good as we are chaos it's just a fantastic record so hopefully 
dealing with demons will be to other people what we are chaos is is to me. Yeah, and just like I discussed with with some other band, like some actually are are in a way happy with the whole pandemic and lockdown and such because to their feeling it gives people the time to actually digest the album more instead of like just like listening bits of it and go out and about they actually you can take the time to like sit down and listen the whole album through which i think is like an interesting like way of looking at it <laughs> um you know there are there are little positives that can yeah. come out of this whole thing and i keep on telling you know my friends that are not dealing with the pandemic well to well for one find comfort in the fact that you don't have a choice mm. and um, also try to use this time to your advantage, you know, learn a new hobby, learn a new skill, or if you do have hobbies and skills, get better at them. And, uh, you know, that, that's the way I've been looking at it. And I've been, you know, and another thing that that's great that happened is, you know, I just adopted a dog about a week ago and a lot of the shelters for animals in this area, um, got rid of every single animal that they had. Um, because of the pandemic. And even when I went to my local shelter to find my new dog, Moki, um, she, uh, you know, I, I, this is the third dog that I've adopted from that place over the course of my life. And um, I couldn't believe how many empty cages were there when I went to go, uh, go pick her up. You know, it's, uh, you know, there, it's a shitty time, but, uh, you know, there are little positives that can come out of it. And, you know, I'm trying to uh, <laughs> focus more on the positives and the negatives these, these days. Yeah. Well, that's a good attitude because just being negative doesn't help much really. <laughs> no, it does not. Yeah. Um, I, I um, heard or read somewhere that you're a quite big um, industrial fan. Yes. Um, made me wonder if there's like any, like, I don't know, more new industrial band that you, you discovered that you really like, or? There's only one, and okay. they're from LA, and they're called Three Teeth. Yeah. Um, my, one of the, he, he, this guy named Mario, and I actually produced his band, it's called Thrown Into Exile, many, many years ago, and he was also my, the, uh, he also worked at ESP guitars for many years. And so that's how we got to know each other. And he's the one that told me about him. We were outside of a show out in Hollywood and I don't know how we got on the, on the topic. And he's like, have you heard of three teeth? And I'm like, three, what? And he, you know, he's like pointing at his teeth and doing three, you know, it was a little bit loud in the club and no, I haven't heard them before. And, uh, you know, so I went home and listened to them and I was just like, Oh my God, finally another good industrial band. And, you know, and they sound a lot like they should be in the nineties, which to me were the golden years of industrial music and goth too. It's just like so much good industrial and goth came out of the nineties. And I don't think there'll be another time like that ever, but uh, there's a lot of, bad industrial bands out there and even some of the bands that i like there's only a handful of songs that they've put out that are really good so there's a lot of bad industrial out there but three teeth is definitely not one of them i they're just awesome you know i saw them live a few times and the last time i saw them live it was i i could tell where i was like okay these guys have been out on tour a long time now because it's really showing in their live show. They, they're getting mm. better at what they do. And um, anybody that's a fan of industrial music should definitely go check them out. They're, they're a good band. Yeah, that's, that's, that's true. <laughs> I got to see them in the beginning of this year and still, and they basically blew me away. So <laughs> I yeah, wasn't too they're, surprised they're, that they're you named them. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay, well, I'm guessing we're about there. Um, one more thing I wanted to ask. Um, I know you you um, do a lot of engineering and stuff. 
for other bands. Um, is there any like, like, band you recently did, did work for, or like a recent band you discovered um, outside of of the engineering that um, you want to like give a shout out to, like that we should check these guys out. Uh, there's a band called Tortured Saint out of Toronto, just a local band. Um, doesn't you know not signed to a record label that um actually because i did that band and i make you know mixed their record and put it out was actually what got me the the job to work with wednesday 13 on his last record because des manages them he i posted a little you know promo clip of tortured saint and shortly after i i posted it you know i got a text from des like you mix this and i was like yeah and uh he's like i think he showed it to wednesday or something like that and then i ended up producing their record and you know we're doing another one in january so it's uh you know you never know where things are going to lead yeah that's cool well um, i'm afraid i got i gotta i gotta run i already got my next interview yeah. calling me yeah that's that's no problem i was just about to wrap it up <laughs> um well lots of luck with your uh record and hope to you see you sometime soon thank you very much man it's been a pleasure yeah.